Mexican League. I'm going to be your host for today, and I'm going to be joined by the one and only Burger. How are you doing, my friend? I'm fantastic, Max Man. Thank you for the wonderful introduction. Today, we have uh, Zappa Esports and Boosted Tryhards, and it's mm. going to be a fantastic game. I'm so excited. Yeah, we are absolutely hyped for this first match of the day. And also, that is not the only action we're going to be having on Twitch today, guys. We're going to be having two other matches coming up at 10.30 p.m. Uh, first one is going to be Tribe Up against RPYC. And coming from two old C9 fanboys as me and Berger, we are absolutely thrilled to go into that match a little bit later in the day. And also on the channel number two, we're going to be having Miku Hatsune up against Kawaii Anime Girls. So those are two matches you definitely want to keep an eye out for. And anyway, we're going to be waiting to get into draft for game number one of Zappa East 4 up against Boosted Triad. So we cannot wait any longer. So like Berger, what do you think these teams would like to go towards? I haven't seen Zappa East 4 play that. I haven't seen Zappa East 4. I saw Boosted Triad play a little bit. I see, saw them play two matches. But like... What do you think, meta-wise, hero, the heroes that are going to be focused on into this, uh, this first game? Well, we're probably going to see, you know, like Taka, Fortress, those like very standard bands at the beginning. Even though, if you've ever heard me cast, you know that I love, you know, off-meta crazy strats. That, you know, if they work, they're fantastic. And if they don't, well, you know, A for effort, right? Hmm. So, you know... I I did see Starboy play a bot lane uh, weapon, Catherine, in VPL, so that was fun to watch. Maybe someone will be, you know, inspired to pull that out themselves, but uh, only time will tell as we get into this draft here. Yeah, I think we had, like, more interesting a few days prior. We had a match with 360 Noskirt, which casted, and we had um, hybrid Arden mid lane with Spellfire was quite intriguing to check out. So I think you would have actually loved that match. I would have liked to have you with me. Unfortunately, that wasn't, that wasn't, you weren't there that day, but that was a very nice matchup. We're going to have to see. And they won. They also won that game. It was a hybrid Adam in. So we might have some weird exotic picks like that. We're going to have to see. But anyway, we're going to try and wait and get into the draft as soon as possible. I do not know when the draft is actually going to start. Oh, draft already started. Perfect. Okay, so the two first bands on both sides, for Zappa Esports is going to be a Celeste ban, and on the side of Boosted Child is going to be a Kestrel ban. Kestrel ban is fairly uncommon, followed up by a first pick is going to be Taka for Boosted Child. What do you think of, like, Taka first pick? I mean, Taka is so good mm -hmm. that it's, it's a must pick or a must ban. Like, there's really no other option. His base damage is just too high, especially once you stack him up late game. He becomes a powerhouse that you do not want to mess with. So I'm glad that he's picked up, but that also opens up, you know, a fortress that is his most direct counter, I would feel like. Yeah, but like exactly what you just mentioned, they picked up Arona. First pick that was uh, taken on the son of Zappa Esport, followed up by the fortress. So he did just do perfectly well there on guessing that pickup. So now they're going to be having a very nice dive potential starting to build up in that comp on the side of Zappa Esports. So if they keep going with heroes like that, they're going to be able to fully dive on the back lane that's going to be picked on the side of Boosted Child. But for the moment, they do not have back lanes as they do second pick then a lance into uh, Arona Fortress. And I do really, really enjoy that pickup because CC is a big, big problem when you, uh, when you are trying to build on your own a dive comp. So like, what do you think of Lance into that Fortress Rona pickup? I think that was probably the best they could have picked, other than like a Catherine, as you know, Lance's CC is so incredibly good at protecting those carries. So, you know, when Rona jumps in, pops the red mist, boop, just get knocked away with the Githian wall. When Fortress tries to dive, Githian wall knocks him away and especially can stun them out of ults and things in the, um, like into walls. And so that was. It was probably the smartest pick they could have done there. Yeah, like I, I played a few times against Hegman. Um, this is sub for Salty Potatoes, and he mains Lance. And I really think he's one of the best Lance worldwide. Because Lance, if you play it properly, yeah. you're just going to combo CC, and your CC combos with the root and the Jithin Wolf CC is going to basically you get CC literally every few seconds, and you cannot move from your position. So if they play it properly, if I if he plays it to that level. Like, Rona Fortress are not going to be able to do anything. And uh, as we see, like, looks like Draft is a little bit blocked for us. I do not know what's going on. 
The draft is not moving. We don't. I can see on the stream what's getting banned. I see a cruel ban on stream on the side of uh, Zappa Esport. Like cruel ban, fairly common. They didn't pick a jungler then on the side of Booster Child, so they decided to ban a powerhouse in that position that's not yet picked for Booster Child. So very nice pickup on the side of Zappa Esport. Uh, what do you think of cruel this meta actually, Burger? I think cruel is strong, but he's also countered easily. You know, he's been. He's been kind of a power pick in the jungle for such a long time. A lot of people know how to play against him, I feel like. So, you know, you get those, like, very bursty comps, kind of what Rona and Fortress, to some extent, can bring. And uh, that's probably the best way to shut down this cruel. Yeah, indeed. And then we're going to be having, on the side of Booster Child, it's going to be a Rezaban. So, like, Booster Child likes to go with fairly uncommon bands, like Kestrel Ban, Rezaban. Something that you see like more in that pick situation than the ban situation. So interesting. I think they do really have their their idea in head right there. They know what comp they're going towards. So they may be banning toward for what they're going to be last picking. And they're going to be following that up with a Vox pickup. So they needed a backlane hero. And they're picking it like their first backlane hero right there is going to be a Vox. So what I do actually like is that it's a flex hero. Can go CT, can go weapon, can go bot, can go mid. So it, like it, it blocks a little bit what they're going to be doing. But anyway, it's going to be followed off right off the bat with that Samuel pickup. So now you know Samuel should be going mid. He's played sometime top. So like, what do you expect? Like, how are, is this Vox and Samuel going to translate with that Lance and Taka pickup? Um, I feel like they need another kind of tank in this mm. lineup because you've got Taka, who's very squishy. Samuel's very squishy. Vox can be very squishy. And if Lance just gets blown up by, you know, everyone focusing him, then there's zero protection left for the back line. So, and they are dealing with a fortress, so they need that tank front yeah. lane indeed. So, you know, picking up, maybe flexing Lance to jungle and picking up an Arden, or maybe Tony, or any any one of, any other tank really could solve their problems. And looks like we're going to be having then, with not, not look, it looks like is they are actually going towards this. Like we were talking about the dive potential now, they had the Fortress, they had the Rona, and they're going even more towards that kind of decision making as they do pick up then that Glaive. It's like the one tap hero that can literally one shot heroes if you play it properly. So we're going to have to see how that's going to be playing out. And then it's going to be also having the Arden. So it's going to be interesting to see who's going to be the Rome. Are we going to be having a carry Arden or is that going to be Rome Arden? with uh, CP Jungle Fortress. I think that's what's going to be occurring right there, going to have that CP Jungle Fortress. And then that Roam Arden seems a little bit more uh, common right there. And uh, yeah, like, what, what do you think of like, like that Arden Glade pickup there followed up with like the Fortress Rona? Like that dive potential is absolutely huge. Yeah, so win condition, dive the carries. The hmm. uh, Zappa's win condition, don't get dove basically, is how this is going to work out. And um, so with the the Glaive situation, I, he's a lot better to be playing in a lane. I feel like Arden is definitely a captain, and especially CP Jungle Fortress does stupid amounts of damage. You know, that, that would probably be the smartest um, option, especially because they want, you know, maximum damage output to delete these carries. Yeah, like as as usual, when you have those dive comps, go on the carries, try and one tap them. If you one tap them, it's basically GG in that fight. It's gonna have to see anyway. It looks like the ban phase for both sides is having a little bit of a of a problem. No, nothing's getting picked up or banned off. So we're gonna have to try and see what they're gonna go towards uh, soon. What still like what powerful heroes are still open? Like we got like a Reza ban, we got a Cruel ban, we had a Celeste ban, we had a Kestrel ban. What could come up next? Like what, what do you think should be banned on both sides? What could be a problem for both of these comps? As a reminder, because Bogacon doesn't have the draft, like um, they got Samuel, Vox, Lance, Taka on the side of Booster Childs, and Zappa Esport, they got that Rona, uh, Fortress, Glaive, and Arden, like full dive comp. Like what do you think can be hero-wise a problem for both of these comps? Well, if you're the if you are the dive comp, I would say ban away Batiste. <laughs> He's probably your biggest um, CC threat right now. Your fear. And yeah. <laughs> if you are the, you know, the anti-dive comp, then you want Batiste so that you hmm. can. Looks like we're going to get a Varia ban coming through in chat from uh, Boosted Tryhards. Oh. And Varia, you know, not maybe the best ban 
this late in the looks like we have in burger lagging a bit there like really need oh burger yeah you lagged a bit there can you please uh restate what you just said oh sorry <laughs> no problem uh, oh look uh no we're not gonna that's not gonna work sorry hello burger one two three one two three are you with us yes. we're having some technical difficulties okay he's there he's back and <laughs> Varya is good. <laughs> just, just make it short that like, Varya is good. Yeah. <laughs> okay. So yeah, like Varya can like once again. I'm a, I'm an EU pleb, so in NA Varya's played quite a lot. So I wouldn't mm -hmm. be surprised if it does get banned off. And like you said, like Batiste would be absolute. Like it's almost a must ban on the side of Zappa Esport. But like it'd be even a, a bigger problem if they do not ban that Batiste. They already got the Lance. High CC, very good against like protecting your backlink carries and also uh, for CCing the uh, high dive potential heroes. Might have a few problems with the Glaive, but against Fortress and Rona, he will have no problem. So if they have the Batiste on their side as extra, they can have the best CC comp ever. And that will absolutely wreck everything. So you're going to have to try and keep an eye out on what's actually going to be going on. Uh, as the draft is not still not moving, so I do not know what's actually going on. Sorry for the little delay on stream, you guys. Um, it wouldn't be the NACL without technical difficulties, right? Ah, oh, hell yeah. Hell yeah. <laughs> he knows what he's talking about. So, what is the one for them? Alpha hasn't been picked up, as it is a powerhouse still in, in 3.1. Um, Tony is still out and available. So, I, I think I wouldn't be surprised to actually see um, those two kind of pickups coming out. Lyra is a roam that hasn't been picked up. Like, the two roam positions have already been taken, unless it's going to be probably a CP mid Lyra on the side of Zappa Esport, then Lyra can still come out. Yep, and I, I do see in chat we've got an alpha ban. You oh, it's an alpha ban. Caster curse, you predicted that one, you know, right on the nose. Oh, nice. Yeah, okay, so I, don't, I do not know why it's not shown on stream, then no practice, wait. Where, is, where do you see that info? Where is it? I want to see. Party chat. Pa oh, oh, that's an input. Oh, it can blind. Oh, okay. Okay, I was watching the Twitch chat for a second there. I was saying, wait, okay, it's fine. Okay, so, I don't know, the party chat is actually glitched for me, that's why, okay. Because the last comment I have on it is, your mum gay. Okay, that's interesting. Um... <laughs> yeah, well, you know, let's... <laughs> no, you. <laughs> that's what I was waiting for, Burger. come on. Ah, before you got me there, okay. Yep. <laughs> So yeah, just gonna have to okay. try and see. So can you tell me what they're saying in the chat, please? Because I do I I can't see. Alpha ban, Idris pick, Finn pick. So looks like we're finally ready Finn to start. Pick. Hmm. So Finn uh, pick is on the side. What side is the Finn on? You know, that's an excellent question. <laughs> <laughs> okay, well we're gonna have to see. What what where could a Finn be? Because like they already got the Lance on the side of Boosted Child, and they already got like that Arden that's supposed to be played as a Rome on the side of Zappa Esport. I suspect it's going to be played on the side of Zappa Esport, and if uh, that is actually the case, or well, it might be a CP mid Finn. Well, my my brain is melting, everyone. Like, come on, like, it's, I, I don't know what's going on. We're going to have to see. So it's going to be, indeed, it's going to be, no, not indeed. It's going to be played on the side of Boosted Chiard. So is that going to be then a weapon uh, launch? I do indeed think so. I would, yeah, I would assume so. Hmm. You know, you probably got mid Samuel, Captain Finn, Top Taka, mm -hmm. bottom. Idris and then Jungle Lance. That's that would be the most logical uh, scenario in my in my mind. I want to see the spaghetti build. I want to see the full spell sword lost build of spaghetti played in CA. That was that was good times when thirty five came out. Full spell sword glaive or uh, lance. That was the thing that everyone used to play. That was really fun. So but we might see it. We're gonna have to see anyway. And also then we did have the Idris pick up on the side. Um, of Zappa Esports. So we're going to have to try and keep an eye out of, on that Idris. It's going to be then a CP Idris. Um, looks like it's going to be played mid. So we're going to have to try and keep an eye out for that. Going to have that Rona surely go top. Uh, or Rona bot. And there's going to be a top where lane Glaive. They can still both be played in any of those positions. And uh, we're going to see both teams slowly going to be converging into their own jungle. And we're going to have to try and see if they do decide to go for an early invade. But so far, it doesn't seem like it. Yeah, early invades would benefit uh, Zappa more, as you know they're more of an early game kind of team. 
with the, the fortress and glaive especially and um i feel like boosted tryhards are much more of a late game scale team with you know vox and samuels so we'll see we're you know we're just got regular jungle rotations for now but we'll see what uh what progresses very soon yeah we're gonna have to keep an eye out for that once again like two roams are gonna be in that mid lane so it's gonna be that uh, it is actually gonna be well it looks like a roam lance and Opai69 looks like he's going towards a weapon fin. Um, oh, please. please, please. I think you're going to be happy, Burger. We, that's what we call exotic like comps. That exotic buildups. That's exactly it. Like in a tournament, in a weapon fin, I would be genuinely surprised. And if he carries, I would be even more surprised. Because I like, please carry weapon fin. Please carry Upai. You will make my day a hundred more times more interesting today. We're going to see uh, Luis a little bit pushed out of his own jungle camp. Not going to be denied that healing tree quite easily. And Taco maybe looking for the kill, but we do have Kiang going to be rotating over, giving the extra help to take down Poke the Potato. Again, poked hard, actually, right now. He did already use the Kaku. doesn't have anything yet. That's going to be the afterburn coming out. Maybe the first blood coming out for the side of, um, of Zapak. And that's going to be then first blood going over to the side of Zappa Esport. Nice move there. And uh, that was, uh, unfortunately, Taco going a little bit too far and giving over his life. Yep. You know, classic uh, level 1, level 2 jungle uh, over-rotation out mm. of Taka. He just got punished for it. And Boosted Tryhards, did, uh, they did okay responding to it. But it was a very good job by uh, Zappa Esports to capitalize on it. Yeah, indeed, that was a very nice move. And into that mid lane, then we have the Samuel picking up a kill on that Idris. Unfortunately, we do know CP Idris early game in the mid lane. He is a melee hero. He can't do much. He must get his passive up and available before he becomes relevant. So far, he doesn't have his uh, divergence past passive. So he's going to be in a really, really bad spot until like probably the start of the first two uh, minutes. But indeed, right now, he does have all of those crystal bits. So he has unlocked his passive. So he's going to be in a much better star spot right now. Yeah, this is a golden opportunity for boosted tryhards to kind of be more aggressive with the jungle because Louise here is probably going to be forced in the uh, to stay in from break um, to you know protect the Idris uh, from from Samuel until he until Idris. Oh, we have a little bit of connection problem on New Burger. Burger. Looks like we're losing Burger, unfortunately, there for a second. Are you back with us? Apparently not. Okay, that's fine. So we do have a 1v2 situation into that right. bottom jungle part of the map. We do have Poke the Potato trying to run away, but you do have the Fortress on his tail. Will he be able to get that killing blow? I'm not sure. Poke the Potato really too harsh using that house camera passive, getting the extra move speed. He's going to be living another day. So far, we are almost four minutes into the game. One to one kill uh situation for both teams so so far no team has really took the lead and the opi 69 was a is weapon fin i want to see what he's going to build up i'm really intrigued like as a weapon fin what do you think he's going to be building up uh in this situation upi 69 i i really don't know because if i was going to carry Finn, i would probably put him crystal because his ratios are really high for on his um abilities but probably like straight up um like just damage like, a, like the spell sword build that you were talking about oh angel able to steal that crystal chin for himself gonna be popping the healing fast would he be able to survive a little longer i do not think so unfortunately you have Luis there just gonna be able in his team to get right onto him that's gonna be another kill going over to the side of zappa esport but very nice still with that impale coming out um from an angel z with that lance pickup so uh, like gonna have to try and keep a an eye out for that one and Apathy in this bot lane gonna be a little bit ganked out by Poke the Potato. Not gonna be able to do much so far. Unfortunately, the gank potential of Taka doesn't have that much CC, doesn't have any CC, so he can't do anything to keep him around. That's gonna be uh, uh, Apathy able to escape to base. And uh, what? Come on, Weapon Fin, buy some items. I wanna see what you're doing. <laughs> yeah, uh, Taka we see has purchased his first item, which is a Storm Crown, which. Uh means he's probably going to go towards a more utility build and uh my internet is not holding up sorry about that stream uh no problem for that and wait it looks like we might have a little bit of a fight there angel's going to be getting that information on eternal mage going to be going away quite actually easily when the uh, the right way around and first item like just real quick like first item on uh, lost games 
on that uh, CP mid Samuel is a clockwork. What, what do you think of that pickup? Okay, we do not have him, unfortunately. That's going to be a very nice oblivion coming up from Lost Game. That's going to be an easy kill picked up by Lost Game. Questioning that clockwork build-up. He's making it work whatsoever. So, very nice move on his part. There's also going to be a Storm Crown first item on that fin. So, I, I'm actually quite like... I do not know what to say about this game. And that's going to be Taka almost going down. Going to be you popping his Kalki right on time before taking that 495 damage to the face. A nice move on his part. All right. Finn going for the tank fin, the storm crown. Looks like it's going more towards a utility fin. So they're going to be having like basically a double roam, if you can say like that. We're still looking to go towards that damage potential. It's going to have to, going to, have to keep an eye out on that one. This is also going to be huge for objectives. With the storm, with the double storm crown, but not a whole ton in like the hero damage uh, output. So they're gonna have to rely on Iliad. I feel like as Vox, as a uh, Opai gets jumped on, and here comes Zappa. Yeah, three v one situation there. Opai, unfortunately, being Finn, he doesn't have a huge um, move speed. He's gonna be popping the healing flask to survive another day. Very nice pull there coming down onto Daniel. He's gonna be putting that quibble down. I believe he's gonna be coming out, not gonna be connecting, unfortunately, but just blocking away their escape route. Now Daniel taking quite a hit to the face. Will he be able to escape? He's going to Vanguard himself. That's going to be another kill going over to the side of Zappa Esport. Are they going to be going for last game? Does pop the Healing Flash just in time. And that's, that's going to be Daniel tanking up a lot of damage. Not going to be able to survive it any longer. And now Apathy going up wild with that red mist. Trying to get onto Upai 69. And that's going to be a double kill going over. Back and forth to boosted child with last games getting two other kills. I mean, it's, like, it's impressive. Like They were able to turn that one around after like that huge engagement on the side of... Um, of Zappa. So nice move coming out from Boosted Tryouts. Yeah, it was a very nice turnaround. We saw, you know, the t how tanky Finn really can be if he's, you know, just taking so much damage. And Lost Games there did a really good job landing his shots. Um, he's only got a clockwork, but that was, you know, enough for some solid damage. And now he's got a Frostburn as well. So he's going to be even more powerful in this uh, mid to late stage. Poke the potato in the bottom of the jungle. Going to be going down in a one to two situation there. Luis did a very nice rotation. And also, uh, while we were talking about that in the top lane, that was uh, the first turret going down to the side of Zappa Esport with Kigong taking the turret away. And, uh, like, so, Upai, why is he going to be building up next? Like, like I was really, I really, I really wanted, I'm so disappointed we're not having a weapon fin. But, He's going to go utility, so I suspect him to go for high um, cooldown. So probably a clockwork would be very interesting to build up on that on that fin. So we're going to have to try and keep an eye out. That's going to be Eternal Mage take, almost taking that uh, damage to the face there, but that's not going to be enough. And now Lewis going to try and do the reversed engagement on Lewis. Is he going to be able to find the angle? Yes, he will be doing that with his Corrupted Genius passive. Again, an easy pick up right there. Lost games, I was like talking about that clockwork first item, and it, he's, he's making it work fairly well. So we're going to have to try and be careful with that one. He also has got um, on that Samuel pickup, he did get a Frostburn, which is like really, really uncommon. Like, what do you think of Frostburn clockwork on a Samuel? I mean, Frostburn is probably one of the only um, items that we can still see on Samuel. But Daniel does get jumped on a little. Yeah, we completely, we, we completely use you, you're losing your burger. Sorry for that. Uh, Poke the Potato, going to be a little bit engaged on, but going to be able to escape quite fast with his house coming up passive. That's going to be also Lost Game securing a quite an easy first turret in this uh, mid lane. And now Poke the Potato staying, maybe overstaying a bit too far there, but he's going to be using his Healing Flask. He will be okay for now. Lewis also going to be using his Healing Flask to go up against the damage output of Lost Game. Was, like Lost Game did a really good job with that build. I'm actually quite surprised. Taking quite a reverse engagement there, but they know their limits on the side of Zappa. Going to be letting that one slip away. And um, for the time being in that top lane, that was almost Iliad going down, and that was the Glaive Keegan on the side of Zappa going down first. Also in that top part of the jungle, be careful there, Lost Games. You're going in a 1v2 situation, going to get engaged on with the Truce of the Truce. Very nice Oblivion coming out. Going to be putting two members asleep on the side of Zappa. Now he's going to try and es escape through the river. Very nice uh, Gorni coming out there. Going to be able to get the high CC potential on that Samuel is going to be able to get away for the time being. That's the last CC there. The Wizard of the Ithium Wall just abling that Samuel from rotating and turning that fight around. That's going to be a kill going over to Iliad on the side of Booster Child. Like they're turning like every fight, they're losing at the start and they turn it over with just 
high, nice level play, and that's going to be the afterburn. Forced out of Keegan to try and escape from the hands of Lost Games. Louise extremely low. Is he going to be going down with the last auto attack? Yes, he will be indeed. And now Keegan loses his turret himself. Going to try and get the killing blow on that box. Will he be able to do so? That's going to be a block coming out of Iliad just on time, and he will be surviving another day. Are you back with us, Berger? Looks like we've lost him completely, everyone. Okay, there's no problem in this top lane. Now, we do see the side of Boosted Child. Looks like they're going to try and go for that second turret as soon as possible. Are you back? back again? Yes, my game oh. crashed. Internet oh. OP. I am back. Okay, perfect. So, did you see what was... Oh, no, your game crashed. You couldn't see what actually happened. Uh, interesting. So, like, we have a big, big push in this top lane. Uh, two turrets going right off the bat to the side of... Boosted Charles, so that's a very nice objective that's going to be able to them to do a lot more and go a lot further in those team fights. We're going to have a little bit of an engagement coming out of Zappa. Looks like they're going to be knowing their limit. They don't want to go any further, but Angel is saying, no, 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 he wants to try and fight this one out. He's in the choke points. He's going to get high CC potential with those shifting wall. If they do connect, that's going to be an impel coming out, doing a very nice job. Taco going fairly low, but so is that guy. He's going to be forced the afterburn away. And now look at that last, last game, unfortunately, starting that fight at the wrong moment, he's low on energy, but it doesn't matter, he's still picking up the kill, that's going to be two kills, going over to that box right off the bat, he's doing a really nice job, and also into this bot lane, that's going to be a path, he's going to be forced a cord back into the hands of Upai69, and Upai69 pulling off a 1v1 against that Rona, I do not know what to say about this game, I'm in shock so far. Yeah, it looks like the boosted tryhards might not be so boosted after all, as they take a very good of team fight right there. There was no, there was no support coming in from Zappa. They just kind of left uh, Louise and Keegan there to die. And uh, you know, if they might have had some, uh, like an Arden Gauntlet, or if they could have had an Idris doing a ton of damage, they probably could have turned that around. But looks like Boosted Tryhards are going to start up Ghostwing. Yeah, now we do have the Spellfire that did just get purchased for Lost Game. So he was already a huge threat with that non-common, with that uncommon build. So now, uh, like, having that item that, like, almost every Samuel, Samuel builds up on his um, hotbar, that's going to be uh, quite a big threat in these next upcoming fights. And that's going to be an easy ghost ring. Hardly uh, going to be trying to fall over on the side of Zappa. So that's going to be going over to their side. That means they're going to be even more... Uh, scary in the next upcoming fight. Should you have Angel going a little bit far into the enemy jungle? Going to be engaged on with that Truce of the Truce, allowing four members of the side of Zappa to actually go on him. He's still going to survive. He's still going to tank it up. They're not going to be fully committing to that 1v4 situation, which is weird enough. And now they're just so, going to yeah. try and look towards the mid lane. Back, if you want to look towards the bot lane, uh, you know, Finn is just tanking these blows. Apathy's almost dead already. Um, a party impel coming out. Does go the Wizard Red Miss. Force the call comes out. Gonna be able to survive with the Slizz of Hey 3 Mike. Justin Wolf forcing him into that oblivion. He's gonna be using his block right off the bat there. Gonna try and survive any longer. Pathy and Daniel, extremely, extremely low. Gonna be forced to back away. That's gonna be the second turret going down. All second turrets in the game are now gone down on the side of uh, Zappa Esport. And now they're gonna try and look in for more. They're gonna be going for that bot lane chuck turret. Uh, chuck turret. They're just gonna get engaged on going fairly low. Gonna be using his ultimate to escape the burst damage potential from that attacker. He's gonna be surviving going to his own base right there. Taka Potato, very nice Kaisen, avoiding the auto attack coming up from that Bane Crystal. Now Angel, that's gonna be going even for more CC potential. Oblivion already back up. The Oblivion just came out twice in the team fight right there. And now Eternal Mage gonna be still alive on his uh for his team Zappa Esport, but unfortunately not gonna be able to do much as it will be going down to the hands of Lost Game with that Spellfire This prop. looks like it's gonna be game here too, Max. There's not a whole lot that a uh, yeah. half health Blave can do, especially <laughs> that amount of CC in, oh man, that was, that last team fight there, it was just so well executed. You know, they just uh, took apart the, uh, you know, Zappa just so easily and, I think Arden, I counted, was hit with six uh, different CC combos, whether it was a a Root, a Stun, a Finn Stun, the Samuel Sleep, the Vox Silence. I think he was hit with all of them, I think, simultaneously. So, um, yeah, uh, it's going to be a good game. Well played. Uh, boosted Tryhards will take this one. Yeah, GG's Booster Char doing a very nice game, even with the uh, uncommon draft right there. So we're going to say GG. Thank you everyone for watching. In, uh, but like, we're going to be starting fairly soon with the second match. Uh, that's going to be uh, RPYC up against 
drive so if you're interested in that please stick around we'll see you guys in a bit do you have anything to add burger before we call it a day for this match uh weapon fin carry bot lane play it <laughs> okay gg and see you guys soon